Uh, that was not supposed to happen. This is part five of a multi-part build series. In the first video, I went over all the electronic components and why I chose the ones I did. In the second video, I assembled most of the electronics into a computer case and customized it by adding CNC connectors to the rear and mounting all the controls to the front. In the third video, I finished building the main body of the CNC. In the fourth video, I added cable chains, installed the wiring and tubing, upgraded the stepper motor drivers, and set up the VFD to be controlled by the CNC controller. This video is about finally testing the machine and troubleshooting any issues that come up. Now I wanted to show you something pretty cool here. Uh, while I was going through the settings of CNCJS, I noticed that there was something called Shuttle Express. And I happened to actually have one that I got for doing some video editing, but didn't end up really using it all that much. Anyway, so I went through and according to some documentation I found online, I went ahead and set up all the settings for CNCJS. And now I have it so that I can do a little jog wheel. So if I wanted to do the Y axis, Axis there and then if I wanted to select the x-axis and then move that I could and then I can use this one to just kind of select all the different distances that I have and so I thought that was pretty cool and if you happen to have one of these I'll go ahead and link the instructions on how to set that up in the description of the video Hey, a couple quick updates here. Uh, first of all, on the probe, I was having it falsely being triggered on there so it wouldn't actually go down. What I ended up actually doing is taking an audio cable that was nice and shielded, and I just hooked up the little pieces of the uh, probe to that, and it's actually working really good. But I did a dumb thing on here. So if I touch one of the probes to here, and one to like the rail here, you can see it actually has 8.6 volts here. I actually had it go up to 35 volts and I felt a little shock, which is how I found out about it. I assumed the pin in here, the fourth pin, that was in one of the three phases, was actually hooked up to the outer part of this, but I never actually tested it. And I think it's just not connected to anything. So what I need to do is rewire this plug in here so that it's actually just touching the shielding of the plug. Uh, I've already tested that the shielding does in fact connect to the bit down there. I've gone ahead and rewired this so now it is attached to ground and I wanted to show you that I also had to attach a ground wire both here and I kind of went along this cable chain and then out and then I hooked it to the screw. So now the case is attached to that and that spindle is attached through existing wiring over to here and now it connects to the case. Okay, I think we are finally ready to go and test out the CNC. Over the past couple of days, I've been going over some YouTube tutorials in order to figure out how to do the cam tooling in Fusion 360, and I'll go ahead and link uh, some of the ones that I found very helpful down in the description. And I've gone ahead and attached a piece of wood to the CNC, and I countersunk the screws a little bit, so when it does a facing operation, it shouldn't hit those screws. And I now have it in the homing position, or I should say the workpiece position here. And I had an issue with GRBL in that it was setting the homing offset to negative 199 for everything because of my particular setup. And I had to go ahead and change the X, Y, and Z maximum travel paths from the default of 200 down to one. And now zero is where I have the homing switches. I did find a bug in the CNC. If you set those to zero, then it gets, it loses all the settings and you have to type them all in again. So don't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and upload the G code for the item and let's go ahead and run it. So I think what it does first is it goes to the homing position at 000. 
So I'm gonna let it just do its thing there. Why is the Y going forward? That's not right. Oh, it's gonna probably start over there. That makes sense. Oh, it's working. Oh, let me show you. <gasps> Okay, so um, I had a little bit of a power outage on the last t attempt. I think I just can't run the CNC and vacuum at the same time. It was, I've had some power issues in this office. And so it actually wasn't too big of a surprise when it happened. I think what I'm just gonna end up doing is just letting it do the whole thing and then I'll vacuum it up after it's done. supposed to happen okay so that was mostly successful it almost finished up so while I was cutting I actually had the spindle go down a little bit and what had happened is I'd forgotten to turn on the water pump so the motor actually got very warm and because this is a plastic in fact it's PLA which is probably the most susceptible to the temperature um, it actually loosened up a little bit and it allowed the spindle to slip so it started smoking and when I went to pause it to cool, let it cool down then I hit resume and it seems to have missed some steps and just kind of cut into itself and ruined it and it also hit the MDF and cut into that a little bit um, I tightened these bolts up for now and I have the water pump on now but that is something to be aware of I have everything all set up and I'm gonna go ahead and try it again three hours later After the first attempt, there was dust on everything. For the second attempt, I ended up running an extension cord from my other office so I could use a vacuum without tripping the breaker. I will be designing and printing a dust shoe before I use the CNC again because holding a vacuum cleaner for eight hours was really not fun. Here's the final result after some sanding. When I started, I set my work offset incorrectly, so I ended up much closer to the edge than I intended. The correct place for the X and Y axes is that it should just be just inside the stock material here rather than on the outsides. The actual usable work area for the CNC ended up being 480 millimeters on the X axis, 400 millimeters on the Y axis, and about 128 millimeters on the Z axis, minus the length of the end mill. So as you get different sizes, it may adjust a little bit. When you go to set it up in Fusion 360, it asks you for the type of machine. This type of router is a YXZ router, and the way you can tell is that the Y axis moves the entire X axis around, which moves the Z axis around, and the work surface is completely stationary. At this point, if you ask me if it was worth building my own CNC router, for most people I'd probably say no if you're just looking to save money because of all the troubleshooting and fine tuning involved. However, if you're the kind of person who loves doing that stuff, then I'd say absolutely go for it. The things I would do different if I were doing this again are first, that I would not go so cheap on the electronics. A basic Arduino Uno running GRBL is usable, but there are a lot of things stripped out such as per axis homing commands. So CNCJS is often coming back saying that it doesn't recognize certain commands. 
I plan on updating my board to Gerbil HAL, a fork of Gerbil designed for modern microcontrollers, which includes the 600 megahertz Teensy 4.1 microcontroller. That should give me a full feature version of Gerbil. I may explore other software for the laptop as well. I will probably upgrade to a larger computer case in the near future, so everything doesn't feel so cramped. All in all, I still have a lot to learn. Please let me know down in the comments if you like more videos where I work on the CNC. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping make this video possible. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link is down in the description. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please leave a comment and I'll see you in my next video.